Good evening. We'd like to welcome you to our uh, open house for Applied Technology High School. My name is Tony Lynn DeMarco and I am one of the school counselors here at Applied Technology. And my name is Lauren Fiorenzo and I am the other school counselor at Applied Technology. And we just wanted to take a few minutes to go over our scope and sequence for our um, three programs. So we started the school with mechatronics. We added health professions three years ago and we are excited to announce that we will be adding a cybersecurity major um, in the fall of 2021. So a little bit about engineering technology. Um, our program faces, focuses on mechatronics, um, which is a combination of engineering design, robotics, and computer programming. It's the idea that manufacturing is back in the United States, but it doesn't look like it did um, back in the early 1900s. So we're really working um, on getting our students to be able to program computers and machines and to be able to fix those machines that are doing most of the work and have taken the place of the human beings that used to be on the floor. Um, the students are prepared for a degree in um, engineering technology and advanced manufacturing. However, they have the option or the opportunity to pursue a degree in engineering in other fields, such as civil engineering, mechanical engineering, um, if they should so desire. So our health professions program really prepares the students for the broad view of all different areas in the health professions field. And when they go on to college, they have the option to choose things such as nursing, dental hygiene, um, paramedic science, so an EMT, um, our program provides them with a lot of hands-on experience at the college level with real healthcare workers and it provides them with a strong foundation in science. Our new program is cybersecurity where students will learn the essential skills needed to pursue areas in information technology, um, programming, law enforcement, uh, again a variety of areas that they can choose to continue to major in in a four-year college. Um, it really is just a foundation for different areas. Um, they may choose banking, they may choose software development, um, and they may choose healthcare. So it's a combination of the programs. Okay, our scope and sequence. Um, they're similar and different for the three programs. So um, I'm gonna focus right now for Mechatronics on the career and technical education piece, which is the mo most unique piece uh, to that program. In ninth grade, your students will take the design process. That's two classes. Um, one is a hands-on workshop where they will work um, half the year with one of the teachers, half the year with another teacher on a specific project um, and learning how to um, design their project, how to create their project, and how to see it come to fruition. Um, the class that they take prior to uh, the hands-on class is clearly learning how to do that whole process, learning how to use AutoCAD and how to be able to uh, draw their plans. In 10th grade, they take an intro to mechatronics and a drafting class. Again, they're working on the computer, different computer programmings in the design process. In junior year, they learn how to use uh, the machines at the college level. Um, and they also learn a bit of programming on, in a um, Python course. And senior year, they take what they learned in machine tool principles and they actually create something in the concepts of industrial design. So it's almost a two part class. Um, and they also take a fundamentals of programming class. Um, I'm gonna let Ms. Fiorenzo talk about science later, but um, just to point out one of the differences is that in mechatronics, our students start with a high school physics class. Um, and the classes that you see highlighted in yellow um, are college classes. And um, Ms. Fiorenzo will talk a little bit more about that. Um, for our math program, we do start all of our students in Algebra 1. Um, because students are coming from 75 different local districts and have had different experiences, we really want to level the playing field. So we sort of start um, students in Algebra 1 and then move them through Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trig um, with the opportunity to take um, calculus, pre-calculus, calculus, depending on their path. Um, social studies, a simple US 1, US 2 world history. Um, and then for their financial literacy, we do ask the students to take an economics course. Language arts is um, an academic literacy foundation, American Lit, World Lit, and then senior year, students have the option to take a writing course at the college level if they um, have either passed the AccuPlacer test 
or if they scored high enough on their SAT. And we won't bother you with the, <laughs> with the information on that now because it's, it's a little early, but basically the student scores a 450 or higher um, in English or in the write, reading portion of their SAT, they are eligible for college level writing. Um, the visual and performing arts, we do have offer the students a college art class. However, um, we also offer a high school music class for students that are not interested in art. So they do have an opportunity to take either one. Um, one of the main differences between mechatronics and health professions would be the language. Um, in mechatronics, the students will take two, two years of Mandarin. Um, well, the good thing I will tell you is Mandarin is a college class, but I just want to remind you that these college classes are taught over a full year. So in a regular college class, the class will be taught over a semester, but your children will be taking it over a full year. So they're not learning quite as quickly. They're learning the same amount of information, but they have twice as much time to complete it. For senior year, students um, in all three majors will have the option to take a public speaking course if they want at the college. Um, and then at the bottom, you'll see our health and PE courses um, are taught by the college. Um, each year, the students will get one health course and one physical education course. Um, and you'll just see the names of them. Um, one of the most exciting things I think the seniors like is they have an opportunity to take scuba diving if they want their senior year. So that has been um, you know, sort of a, a unique experience for them that they enjoy. Um, and then Ms. Fiorenza will talk about the differences with the health professions major. So some of the differences, as you can see, like Mrs. DeMarco was saying before, the CTE courses, if you look, of course, ours are all for the health profession students. So they do build on each other as well. So you can see healthcare simulations one and then sophomore year is simulations two. The students here have the opportunity to go up to the college in one of the labs with our, our teacher and a professor there. And they get the hands-on experience. They have dummies. They have um, medical rooms there, and they get to just go through a typical day in the health professions field. Um, so, if you see the science courses, one of the biggest things is my freshmen. They start out in college biology. Now, of course, that's a big difference from going to from middle school to a college science. But as Mrs. DeMarco said, these um, semester courses are spread out to full year. So the professor does work with us on keeping the pace a little slower for the kids, but she also does hold them to a higher standard. So if that's one thing that you should be prepared coming into your freshman year as a health profession student is you're taking a college science right off the bat. And you could see that is switched with physics, which is the high school course, your junior year. Another main difference is the languages. You'll notice the health profession students take Spanish one and two. And that's just because we found that Spanish is such a, an important language in this field. We did have enough interest this year for the students to take Spanish three if they were interested. And they can then go on to Spanish four if they choose their senior year on their own time. The cybersecurity program, um, in terms of academic courses, tends to mirror the same as the mechatronic students. And of course, where the differences come in will be in the um, career and technical education. So ninth grade, they'll get an overview of the intro to cybersecurity. Um, they will also have a hands-on class. Um, so it will be two classes for cybersecurity. Um, in 10th grade, they'll work on intro to networking, intro to Linux, um, and they will have a forensics project in uh, January and in May, which is kind of nice. The college um, finishes early, and so these students will have an opportunity to work on um, a forensics project that will be created by their uh, teachers. So it gives them a unique opportunity um, to do things that they might not get to do in their regular classes. In 11th grade, they'll take intro to Python uh, network security and they will have a cryptography uh, project during the downtime for college. And in 12th grade, they'll look at the ethics um, courses and some uh, classes that would be uh, fundamentals of programming and, um, uh, sorry, I can see the program. And, um, 
Ms. Fiorenzo, can you see that course? I can't see it, I apologize. For the 12th grade. Ethical hacking? Okay, ethical hacking, thank you. <laughs> like I couldn't read it from here. My picture was over it, I apologize. Um, and you'll just see also that in the 12th grade, they have the opportunity um, to take those classes that are in yellow if they should so desire um, that are college level courses. We also offer high school classes uh, to complete the high school program. So students have, always have an opportunity to complete the high school program or an opportunity to go on towards an associate's degree. Before I go over the admissions process, I just wanted to mention, I did forget to mention before, um, when the program was set up, we had an articulation agreement with NJIT. Um, so originally with the mechatronics program, we set up our program so that our students would stay um, if they wanted to at Bergen Community College for another year after they finished high school. They would earn their associate's degree and then they could move on to NJIT. They would accept all of their college credits and they would start at sophomore status. Um, I will tell you that last year we had eight students who actually went right on to NJIT because they were able to get their associate's degree while they were here. And we did have seven remain for that rest of the year um, so that they can continue on at NJIT when they finish. With our health professions program, um, we have a similar articulation agreement with Felician College. Um, and as uh, our students get older, we can give you a little more information on how um, how that's going to pan out, but we do have an articulation agreement with them. Again, your students are not bound to go to these colleges, but they we want you to know that these programs are available. Okay, so on to how to apply to Apply Tech. The admissions um, will open October 15th, 14th, sorry, and it closes on December 12th, okay? Um, when you go on, one thing I have to stress is you must know which campus you want to apply to. You can only apply to one of the campuses. There is a slight exception because um, the Bergen County Academies and Teterboro has one application, um, but if you apply to that, you cannot apply for Applied Technology High School. So you really must know which campus you want if by chance you change your mind and you started an application at Applied Tech and then you decided to apply to Teterboro, I just want to let you know that the first application you filled out for Applied Technology would be gone. So you really must commit to whichever school you want to apply to and make sure you know. When you log on, um, think about what your interest is. Each of our campuses offers something very different. Okay, so what we're really looking for is a student who has a true passion for mechatronics or a true passion for health professions. Um, we are looking for students who are doing well in school. And when I say well, I mean giving it their best. And sometimes your best may be a C. Most of the time, you're, you're probably a solid A, B student. Um, but grades are not the end all be all. Again, we're really looking at your interest here. Um, we're looking at your attendance. Um, I know that I have my own children and sometimes, you know, if, if I, my kid doesn't want to get up to go to my local high school, they may not want to get up to come to our school at 7.30 in the morning. So if we look at a student who is, um, has a lot of tardies on their report card, we're going to take that into consideration. Um, so my friends out there, now's the time to make sure your attendance looks really good before you decide to send in your um, application. Uh, we will look at recommendations from your math, English, and science teacher from the uh, eighth grade, so your current teachers, and we will also look at recommendations from your school counselor. Here at Applied Technology, we do interviews, um, and those take place usually in about February or March, um, and I'll give you a big, big hint. The number one question is, why do you want to come here? So you can think about that now. It's also the essay question on the application, so there's a present for you. Um, and we will look at your park results. Again, we're looking for students that are proficient um, or close to proficiency. Again, not, that is not the end all be all, but those are sort of our guidelines. Okay, how do we apply? The application can be accessed at www.bergen.org and then you can go to admissions or you can go directly to the ATHS admissions site. Um, when you go on, you're gonna see a page that looks like what's on your TV screen. The first time you go, you have to register. Um, you're going to register. Now, don't try and trick us. This, this computer system is awesome. Don't have your mom try to sign on as herself so that she can register for you a different school. It's not going to work. Only students can register. So you're going to need to create a login with your username and your password. Okay. 
So once you register, you're going to be directed to the next page. And it's going to be all the info. Um, it'll be a checklist. So the checklist tells you all of the things that you're going to have to enter. And as they're done, it'll be the checkboxes. The first one is super easy. Your personal information, where you live, you must be a Bergen County resident. Um, you're going to, they're going to ask you your date of birth, all the things you already know. You passed kindergarten, you guys know all of these answers, so that's super easy. Number two is a little trickier with the select campus. Again, if you choose to apply to Applied Technology High School, you cannot apply to any of the other campuses. This is, you know, you're making a commitment to a technical program. You're not making a commitment necessarily to the school, but we're really looking for someone committed to the career and technical education that we have to offer here. Number three is where people get a little bit more um, concerned, and it's the essay. It is a very short essay. It's 400 words, and it's why do you want to go to Applied Technology High School? But I'm going to give you a hint. You can write, come back later, and move right on. And the reason you might want to do that is because when you enter your reference names and um, you can preview your application and you can hit submit. Now here's the trick. Once you submit it, it is not submitted forever. So you can go back in and open it as many times as you need to and edit it as many times as you need to. So if you want your English teacher to take a look at your essay before you submit it, you can do that. Just make sure that you always save and then submit again. So you just have to make sure you save your work. The reason why some of you may want to save your work before you finish is that you need to print forms. Um, and then we're going to get to that page in just a moment, but the forms you need to print go to your English, your math, your science teacher, and your school counselor. And just a, a, a word to the wise, the, the more time you give them to fill them out, the more consideration they'll give and the, and the better I think your recommendation will be. A lot of times students print them out December 12th and like it's due in two days. Um, teachers, that, that kind of makes them nervous. So if you can print the papers, you can go back and continue your application later on. Okay. Essay, just wanna, um, I did tell you what the essay was. I also wanted to let you know that you can put it in a Word document um, if you want mom to look at it, you want a friend to look at it, your teacher to look at it, and then you can copy and paste it later on right into that spot right there. Your extracurricular activities and accolades, any if you've uh, um, national uh, junior national honor society honor roll, all of those things can go right in that spot. All of the great things that you want to tell us about yourself, um, and don't forget anything. Um, you know, ski club, music club, whatever you do, we want to hear about it. Okay, these are your um, where you're going to put the name of your teacher. So you're going to put your eighth grade teacher's name for math, science, and English and you're gonna save your references. And you're gonna hit continue. Okay. Now, when you see this, it'll say, it'll give you a validation number, okay? When you've successfully completed your application, and again, you can go back and change this. Nobody, I promise, I promise, 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 because I'm the one who looks at them, I am not looking at this before December 14th. So you can go back and change it as many times as you need to, but the validation number is the number you're gonna need to get back into that application so that you can go back and make any changes you need to. Okay, so it's awesome. You are going to print a few things. School transcript form goes to your guidance counselor. Uh, recommendation forms for your teachers. And if you have an IEP or a 504, then there's a form for your case manager. If you don't have one, that's fine. You don't need to print that form. Now, we made this very easy for you. If you look at the top, it says transcript form, give to guidance counselor. So when you print that, you know exactly who to give it to. The next form says recommendation, give to teachers. So you're gonna give one to your math teacher, one to your science teacher, and one to your English teacher, okay? So each of your eighth grade teachers in math, English, and science are gonna get that. It says give to teachers. The last one says give to your case manager. Again, if you have an IEP or a 504. If you don't, you will not need that form and you can just discard it. And that is how to apply. It is really not that difficult, but again, it does not open yet. So if you go on today, it will not be there. Um, and you have plenty of time, and I, I promise you, even if you're the first one, we're not going to look at it. 
So don't rush, take your time, make sure you, you really feel confident in what you're doing, um, and then start the application process.